HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Lions Club hosted their annual speech contest. We have scenes from the Hopkinton High School International Night, the latest on Hiller Sports, and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, this past week featured a very busy select board meeting. At the February 4th select board meeting, the board approved the town manager's appointments of two new senior library assistants. Um, yep, I've been the children's librarian at the Bolton Public Library for just over five years now. Um, I live in Menden with my husband and our two daughters and our three cats and our three chickens. <laughs> and um, so I, I'm excited for this opportunity because I'll be a lot closer to home. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful library, so I'm very much looking forward to this next step. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I have worked for the Wellesley Free Library in their circulation department as of now three years, actually, this coming month. Um, I have had wonderful experiences uh, working not just at the main library, but at the two branches where I get to uh, experience a variety in patron diversity from very small, eight, small children to uh, elderly patrons to young adults to parent-aged uh, individuals. Uh, I have helped at my time at the Attleboro Public Library volunteering. I had the pleasure of aiding the children's department in creating summer teen programs and helping to run them uh, that were well received by uh, the population as a whole. And as you said, I have worked as a freelance reporter for an, for a number of years, which has given me a lot of wonderful opportunities to interact again with a wide variety of individuals, learn their stories, and learn how best to approach every single situation with patience and an open ear and, and an open heart. The select board authorized the town manager to submit a letter to MassDOT supporting proposed improvements to the Fruit Street Bridge. Future configuration and the piers, the existing piers and the existing abutments are in the way of the future alignment. So we're going to be replacing that bridge. Uh, as part of that bridge <coughs> replacement, due to constructability uh, and staging requirements, that bridge is going to be wide enough for two 11-foot lanes, two 5-foot shoulders, one on either side, and one 5.5-foot sidewalk on the other side. That's, that's what the bridge replacement is going to be. Uh, beyond that, the approach work from Saddle Hill Drive to Huckleberry, uh, again, is a down road. Uh, we've got a, 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 a concept here tonight that I think has support from the town boards that we, we'd like to show you. Uh, the Fruit Street, Fruit Street scope again adds a sidewalk on the south side and bike lanes in each direction from Saddle Hill Road to Huckleberry Road. Uh, we are also, as a course of um, the need to raise the Vertical clearance on Fruit Street will improve the sight distance and the substandard vertical curve that is currently at the intersection of Fruit Street and Saddle Hill Road. And I'll show that in a picture. Yeah. So the photo you see right here is a look at the existing bridge um, on the Fruit Street Bridge looking towards Saddle Hill Road. Uh, off in the distance is the substandard vertical curve. Uh, you can see here at a closer image you can see that the car is just cresting over and you're fairly close to it so it's there's not a lot of distance between you and being able to see over that curve ah, so the overall plan um, starting from Huckleberry Road and traveling east uh, we would add a sidewalk on the southern side of the roadway and you can see there's a new crosswalk across Huckleberry Road connecting to the sidewalk that is on Huckleberry Road 
we, we can we can click back <coughs> through, through those typical cross sections, but uh, in general, we're working diligently towards a 25% design submittal. Um, the, there will be a, a design 25% design public hearing out here in in, in the towns. Um, probably May June of this year, where we'll kind of roll out the the overall design to general public and stakeholders and anybody who wants to uh, who has any interest. I'll, I'll make a motion to submit a letter to Mass DOT supporting the proposed improvements to the Fruit Street Bridge approaches as presented as presented and discussed this evening. Excellent. The select board also voted to approve of the award of the lease of property located at 45 East Main Street to the 26.2 Foundation. The proposal is for an international marathon center. Tonight, respectfully asking the board to approve the award of the lease of the property located at 45 East Main Street to the 26.2 Foundation, uh, subject to the successful negotiation of a lease between the town and the 26.2 Foundation. Uh, the 26.2 Foundation providing information sufficient to satisfy the town with regard to the feasibility conditions that we outlined in the RFP and finally subject to town meeting approval of the list between the town and the 26.2 Foundation. How did we get here? The town issued an RFP for the list of the property back in June uh, of 2019. Uh, with a closing date of December 31st, 2019. Only one proposal was received from the 26.2 Foundation. Uh, we included that proposal uh, and its details uh, in your meeting packet. And then following a very thorough uh, and objective evaluation by the procurement office, uh, the town has deemed the 26.2 Foundation proposal most advantageous. The Hopkinton Lions Club recently hosted their annual speech contest. Here's a look. Picture this. The night is dark with a cloudy overcast and a chilly wind, and it blows through the city. You can hear police sirens in the distance echoing down the streets. The city lights are shining throughout the evening as you wait to enter the movie theater for the nine o'clock showing of Peter Pan. The Hopkinton Lions Club recently hosted their annual youth speech contest. All is normal and it's a pretty typical Saturday night. Suddenly, a man in line reaches forward to the woman in front of him and grabs her purse. The woman, scre the woman screams and struggles to get her purse back. Everyone backs up, looking at the situation in fear. We talked with this year's, and he was also last year's winner, Kevin Gu. Um, I was participating in the Lions speech contest and um, it's where high schoolers are able to uh, write their own speech on a specified topic and um, give a speech on it. And I heard you were today's winner. Congratulations. Uh, what was your speech about? Um, it was on the topic of what is heroism. How long did your speech take you to come up with? Um, I was thinking about writing it for a long time, but I ended up writing it in like uh, the final three days leading up to the speech contest. So. Terrific. And what's the next step for you? Are you going to enter another contest? Um, this uh, competition, I'll be competing in the next level, uh, which I believe is regional or district. And um, yeah, I'm excited. And did you enjoy your experience today here at the speech contest? Yeah, this was a very great experience. I recommend uh, for any other high schoolers to try it out. But then, a dark shadow leaps from a tall building. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. He jumps down, wrestles the bag away from the man, and handcuffs him. Uh, the Lions in Massachusetts started having youth speech contests back in about 1980 and we've been doing it since. It's a statewide competition open to high school students in grades 9 through 12 and they may be homeschool, charter school, uh, private institutions and we pick a topic each year which we hope will be interesting to the high school students for them to write a speech on 
and the speeches need to be between, between five and eight minutes long. And uh, this competition, as I said, is statewide. So we have uh, five districts in the Lions, and we represent the District K, and we're the ones who oversee the contests. Uh, we look at the uh, policies and procedures, and we pick the topics for each year. Terrific, and how many entries did you have this year? Well, we're still in the club level, and uh, we have about 48 clubs in the, our district, and right now we only have about 10 clubs that are participating. We'd love to get that number up, uh, but it's uh, difficult sometimes to get someone at the schools to promote the contest. So uh, then it goes on to a zone level and then a region level. Then we have our midwinter convention, and that's for District K. The winner of the District K contest goes on to a state level contest, and there are four other districts that compete at that time. And can you uh, talk about the criteria that was used to pick the winner today? There's a whole list of criteria of how they stuck with the topic, examples they gave, uh, their intonation, uh, their presentation style. So it's looking at very many aspects of what they are speaking about. And overall, how was the speeches today? Very good. Uh, it's always interesting to hear the different perspectives that the students have on a particular topic because you never know when you pick the topic, is this going to go over, is it going to be interesting, you know, what will they say about it. So uh, I was very impressed with the speeches tonight. Anyone can help someone out and anyone can lend a hand. It doesn't take a strong person endangering their lives to be a hero. But it, but it does take a strong-hearted individual who wants to help. So, is it a bird or a plane? No, it's us, because we can all be heroes in our own way. Thank you. Coming up next, the latest on Hiller Sports will take a visit to Hopkinton High School's International Night and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. A whole lot more ahead, stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller's basketball has been very busy as of late. Here is a look at the latest in Hiller sports. Trying to feed it in, it's stolen away. Good hands there by Keith. Keith along the wing, over to Finfrock, launches the three, got it. The Hopkinton Hiller's boys basketball team has hit a bit of a rough patch. They have lost their last four games and currently stand at nine and seven on the season. The Hiller boys are one win away from clinching a playoff spot and have the next four games in order to grab that clinching win. You're looking at scenes from their game against Dover Sherborne on Tuesday, February 4th. The Hillers fell to the Blue Raiders in that game 67 to 50. Junior Brian Keefe netted 10 points while senior Jacob Cohen struck for nine. So that's, that looks good from here, and it is. You could just tell right when it, once you launched it, great shot by Sensony coming in off the bench. The Hiller girls basketball team have played some good basketball lately. 
They have won their last four games. You're viewing scenes from their game on Friday, January 31st, versus Norton. They took that game 42-29 and followed up with a pair of road wins over Holliston and Dover Sherborne. The Hiller girls are two wins away from clinching a playoff spot and have five games left in the season. Congratulations to the Hopkinton Hillers boys and girls indoor track teams. After going undefeated in their regular season meets, they went on to grab the league title at the TVL indoor showcase meet this past weekend at the Reggie Lewis Center. Hopkinton High School recently hosted International Night. HCAM's Mike Tarosian gave us a look at the festivities. I know it, I'm Mike Tarosian, and I'm here at the Hopkins High School cafeteria for a very special night. Tonight is International Night. This is where all the international students and all the clubs come here and they show off their countries. They show the similarities and differences to the United States and the countries, and we get to taste some fine food. So won't you come with me? We're gonna go talk to some of the uh, international students, some of the clubs, and we're gonna try out some of their food. All right, so I'm going to make a little visit to China right now. So over here, I see this lot display. What, what is your name? My name is Zach Wayne. Okay. And you're from where? I'm from Shenzhen, China. Okay. And you're over here. And what are you displaying for us here? So here I make this. I like this. It's uh, a kind of tra traditional Chinese food, the Chinese fried rice. So I, me and my host family actually helped me to make this. Okay. And we just bring this here. Like a lot of people just take it. We have this much dishes <laughs> just now. Okay, actually a few more over there we can make it work. What? I said there's a few more we can maybe work it. So uh, so you're gonna show off, uh, are you gonna be doing a presentation later? Yeah I'm doing a presentation later about like the culture and history on China and actually it's a normal like student life you know like a typical day where I was in a Chinese high school so I will do that presentation like later like 6 30 6 40 something. I love my job. This is great. All right, so I'm taking a little trip to Italy right now. And uh, what's your name? Uh, no. No. And who's with you? Uh, I'm Mateo. with Matteo. Hello. Yeah. And what are you showing off for us today? Well, this is a pasta alla matriciana that is a typical tomato sauce pasta with pancetta. Yeah. Here we have a different kind of pasta. We have ham, cream, and mozzarella. Uh -huh. This is a typical plate from like the middle of Italy. And then we have some bruschetta, bruschetta. right? With bruschetta. mozzarella and tomatoes. Very good. And garlic as well. Oh. And then we have two whole caps of tiramisu. We have a lot of tiramisu, yeah. And a famous dessert from the north of Italy. Yep. That's great. Yeah. All right, so you show this off. Uh, will you be doing presentations later? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're going to present it. Pasta, Italian pasta. All the it's different all... kind of pasta. Okay, and are you gonna show off the similarities between America and Italy? Well, it isn't like American pasta is really good. Actually, it's really bad and you shouldn't eat it. You should just eat Italian pasta. So we're not gonna talk no, about American pasta. are two different things. Italian pasta and American pasta are two different things. So yeah, okay. we're gonna explain the difference. All right, so can I try some of this? Sure. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm going in. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the difference is. Yeah, you can hold that for me while I try. Right, that's good. One? Wait, do you want this as well? I'll try a little of that too. One, yeah. This is why I don't eat dinner before I come here. Do you like it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was meant for this job. Yep. Oh, I bet you were. That is very tasty. I like that. It is. Is, it there is. A, is there a name to that dish? Which one? This one or that no, one? The other one. The other one, well, I would call it uh, macaroni 
No, there isn't really a name. No, I don't know. <laughs> Let's call them macaron macaron yes. Homemade macaroni. Homemade macaroni. Macaroni of the student. Because Jokes. you can make it with like, it's really easy to make and you just make it with things that you have in the fridge and you don't know what right. to do with it. Alright, my next stop is all the way over to Brazil. And this is one of my favorite, favorite pieces that they have to try. I just care about the food, but with me today is... Gustavo. Gustavo, you're yeah, from Brazil. Yeah. Whereabouts? Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. So, you've been here how long? Uh, since August. Since August, okay. Yeah. Now, what are you showing off for us today? Brigadeiros. Brigadeiros. And I love Brigadeiros. Tell everyone at home what they're made of. Uh, they got butter, condensed milk, chocolate butter, and chocolate sprinkles. It is just, it just melts in your mouth. They're fantastic. So, um, what are you going to be, are you going to be doing a presentation afterwards? Yeah. And yeah, what's in the presentation? Oh, just say whatever comes to my head. You're going to be comparing the difference between America and Brazil? Yeah, I'll just speak from heart. Speak from heart, okay. All right, you got to let me try one of these things. Yeah, All go right. get them. All right, here we go. Everyone see this? This is just... This is just pure magic. They're just amazing. Here I go, I'm going there. Come on. Yeah. Like it? Yeah. They're <laughs> outstanding. Did, did, now, did you make these? Uh, yeah. You did? Yeah. All right. You nailed it. Brazil's one of my favorite places to visit because they always have this every year. True. That's great. Outstanding. Good job, guys. We'll Thank see. You. We'll look forward to your presentation later. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, Hopkinton. Matt Clark here to bring you everything happening this week on HCAM. So sit back and get ready for this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, February 7th at 5 p.m., local singer and songwriter Jay Singing Spirit Cunningham performs in a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Medfield Warriors, live in HCAM Ed. On Monday, February 10th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod sits down with members of the Hopkinton Historical Society to talk about the Old Town Rail Station on a new episode of The Senior View. And at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live in HCAM TV. On Tuesday, February 11th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Norwood Mustangs, live in HCAM Ed. On Wednesday, February 12th at 8.30 p.m., Tim Kilduff talks with Startline Brewing co-owner Ted Twinney on a new episode of Business Matters. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Ice Hockey vs. Medfield game and the Swimming vs. Westwood meet will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. Warm beaches of Brazil. We are now on our way to the Arctic, to the Nordic, all the way to Norway. And with me now is Kearney, Julie. And you guys are from Norway. Are you from the same area or what? 
No, we live on the different sides. Different sides, yes. okay. So you got East Coast, West Coast, kind of? Yes. Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right, I get that. All right, so today, International Night, what are you showing off for us from your country? Um, we're, we have waffles with us. It's, it's not like a Norwegian food, but it's just a traditional food that we make a lot. Okay. Especially during winter, like at our cabin after a long day out skiing or whatever. It's very popular to just make waffles and... And I see it kind of spread with it. What's, what's the spread? Hmm? What, what is the uh, little jam that's with it? It's just raspberry jam. The, the waffles is very sweet already, so instead of like putting sh sugar or syrup, we do jam. And okay. we also made a poster uh, with pictures from Norway, so... Yeah. We'll, get it. we'll get those. So, uh, will you be uh, doing a presentation later? Yeah. Yeah, um, okay. And uh, what is your biggest uh, difference between America and, and Norway? That you see, what, what do you find that's the biggest difference, and what's the maybe even the closest similarities? Maybe, maybe the schools because in Norway we don't have like sports and the clubs and like in the school it's okay. like outside. So yeah. What do you find? What do you find different? What's your big difference? I I agree. It's the school and like the sports and like the school spirit. It's okay. very different. All right, I'll see it. All right, so you gotta let me try some of you. Did, now, did you guys make the waffles yourself? Yes. You did. Okay. So do I get to try one? Of course. It's my favorite part. All right, let's serve me up. Here you so, go. yeah, so just serve. So I've never been a skier or anything like that, and I hate winter sports, especially where I plowed for 20-something years for the town. So, But they say this is what you want to have after out there playing in the snow, so I've got to go try it out. Yeah. Right, so let's see. Let's see how they did. All right. I can see that energizing me after being tied out there skiing downhill across country. I can do that. All right, let's head off to the next country. I don't know where I'm going yet. Uh, so first off, what's your name? Antonia. All right, and uh, can you tell us about your table here? Oh, well, it has four things to stand on. This is a table. And we have ham and cheese that is a really nice plate from Chile. You can eat it as an appetizer or as a salad, you know? And we have some crackers with a uh, Chilean thing called manjar. It's really good. It's kind of like caramel, but it's also made of milk and not sugar, so it's really good. All right, so now I'm with the uh, co-advisors of the Ambassadors Club. So tonight, big night here tonight. Yeah. It's our biggest night of the year. Uh, our students worked really hard, all of our international students as well as our ambassador students who get assigned. They, they pick different countries to work with to help set up, to help make the food, make the posters, and just make sure that the presentations are all set to go. So it's a lot of work on the students and every year they just blow us away. Excellent. And uh, who, who helps coordinate all the food? Uh, you know, they...